Hey, welcome back to my channel, Get Your Life. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. Today we have a parole hearing for Jacqueline Cheatman. She is the mother of Justice Cheatman, where two ladies were charged with murder of her son. He was about two years old. And um, I posted this um, article here. You can read it. I, di I did slow it down for you all to read it. But they murdered him. It was found that he was a uh, blunt force trauma to the head. And um, they took him to the hospital. And a few days later, he died. So now she was sentenced to 15 years and she has served about eight years and she's um, up for parole. I believe it's for a medical release, if I'm not mistaken, because she now has cancer. Now, I just posted uh, my other video here I have on the screen. You can go ahead and check that out. I will post that in the description box below. And um, today, this hearing, um, it did take place back in 2022. And at the end of the video, I do have an update on um, her status and what happened. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Order. Today is December 6, 2021. The time is 8.40 a.m. Members of the panel are Carl Lodge, Tony Marabella, and Shara Noxa, who will be chairing today. Support staff located at DOC headquarters and banners are Teresa Bohowick, Maggie Clark, Leah Roten, John Posha, Francis Abbott. Abbott. Our remote location is at LCIW. Would the staff at LCIW please unmute and introduce themselves? Hey, hey. This, this is Deputy Warren LeBlanc with LCIW. Dr. Johnny Frejon, Medical Director at LCIW. Emilda Collins, Assistant Mental Health Director at LCIW. Lieutenant Riley at LCIW. Sarah P, ARDC manager. Can you see us? That's yeah. everybody. Okay, thank you. We are ready for our first case. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? Jacqueline Cheatman. Um, my DOC number is 718-507. Thank you. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. Just real quick, we do have one participant here in support. We have Ms. Lisa Dorsch, who is a friend who will not be speaking. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, Ms. Cheatman? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is the case for Jacqueline Cheatman, DOC 718507, date of birth, March, March 6, 1992, classified as a first felony offender, offense manslaughter, sentencing date, January 9, 2017, sentenced to a total of 15 years. Pro date is March 8, 2026, good time, March 13, 2025, Full term, June 8, 2028. Is this information correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Renato. Good morning, Ms. Cheatman. How are you? How are you today? I, I could, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Um, my name is Cheryl Renata. Your case has been assigned to me this morning, so I'll start off the interview process with you. Now, as mentioned, your parole eligibility date is not until March 2026, but we're here for consideration for a medical parole. Yes, ma'am. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And it's my understanding, Dr. Prejean, we'll, we'll hear from Dr. Prejean in a moment, but he provided us with a, um, with a lot of information regarding your, your medical history and your medical condition. But let me just for the record, you, you're um, currently serving a 15 year sentence for manslaughter. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And you've, you've uh, done about seven years of that 15 year sentence. Eight is that right? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, you, and your um, uh, residence plan should you be granted today a medical parole would be to go to live with your brother in Colorado Springs yes ma'am yes ma'am okay 
I, I had hoped that he would join us today so we could talk to him, but I, I'll hear from Dr. Prejean. Dr. Prejean, is there anything that that you can tell us? We, you, you supplied us with uh, uh, the videos. We had two videos that were very helpful. We appreciate it. Um, and my concern is I don't have any information or confirmation in the record about the brother's ability to, to, to care for her and what that plan would be. I, I'm assuming that your folks have, have uh, confirmed and verified all of that? Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't know about the actual living situation, if it, details about that, but as you probably know, we're not able to actually establish medical care for her prior to her leaving because since she's gone out of state, um, she has to wait till she gets in state in Colorado to get to sign up for their Medicaid over there. If she was going in state, we could do it. We could do an emergency um, authorization and get it established here. Uh, just a, a, an update on her condition. It has gotten considerably worse since I submitted that paperwork. Um, just in the fact that she's still receiving chemotherapy. I think she's had three of uh, four scheduled doses, um, but her, her lab values are showing progression. Not only are the scans showing that the lesions in her liver have gotten larger, but now she's got some really abnormal liver functions and she's become moderately severely anemic. She's also requiring intermittent oxygen now for shortness of breath. So it's, it's progressing. All right, thank you, sir. And I, I noticed in uh, some of the information in the record, I guess, let me just ask the question, is she on any mental health meds? No, uh, not currently. No, okay. But she has been followed by the uh, psychiatrist or social worker? Yes. Mental health staff. Okay. She's been followed by both right. psychiatrist and All right. the staff. And recently, uh, we've had our uh, social workers meet with her almost on a daily basis, just for depression, anxiety. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Prejean. I appreciate it. So, uh, Ms. Cheatman, yes, let me see if they can turn, turn the camera back to you. There you are. Uh, so, have you you've communicated with your brother? Yes, ma'am. Often. So, yeah, okay, because I'm just concerned, you know, as Dr. Prejean said, there's some issue about the Medicare uh, carrying over to a different state. And I'm just, I just want to be sure that you have all that taken care of. So you and he have had that discussion? Um, yes, ma'am. As far as I know, um, right now, I have my family looking into um, other doctors that take Medicaid that would be able to, um, so that way the transition over wouldn't be as difficult um, that way it wouldn't take as long so that way I can continue my health care as soon as I get out um, as far as my brother goes he's already looked into my Medicaid um, he's already tried to start the process of getting my Medicaid unfortunately because I'm not physically at that address I'm unable to get Medicaid right now, but as soon as I were to get there, then I would be able to transfer my Medicaid over to um, find a doctor. Colorado. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, good. I don't, uh, I don't have any other questions. I don't see that, that my colleagues do. I see Ms. Dorch may want to say something. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, how are you? Um, I was a foster mother to Jackie. And I know I'm in healthcare, and if we have to, when she gets here, we could take her to the emergency room and get healthcare established faster that way. Um, we would oh, log her in um, to the emergency room, and the emergency room would then help us find the doctors that she needs um, right away. So we, I have okay. talked to her brother, and I will be helping with her healthcare and her transportation and all of that. Okay, and so you're in Colorado Springs also? I am. Yep. I live in Colorado Springs. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate that. Um, 
I don't, uh, I don't have any other questions. I don't see that my colleagues have any other questions. Is there any other input by the staff at LCIW? Um, this is Deputy Warden LeBlanc. I, I do want to mention, you know, she's been with us a shorter period of time. Um, she was on the local level for a certain number of years. She's been with us since 20, uh, August 6 of 2020. And since that time, which she has been in the medical area and doing going through treatments, but she hasn't had any DB reports. Our staff has been in contact with her family and her family is diligently working. You know, it's hard for them to have concrete plans, but they have been working. Um, they've also talked to the probation and parole people there in Colorado, letting them know that they would have to come here and pick her up get her to Dallas, maybe stay overnight in Dallas, and then get to Colorado, just depending on how well she travels. So they've mentioned that to the Colorado people who have approved her um, plan to be housed in Colorado. Um, so they have like extended, I think she has up a week to report to the people in Colorado, which would give her a little bit of time to get there, start some Good sort job. of medical care, and then get with the, the um, probation and parole people. Um, and I'm sure she'll speak for herself, but you know, she's had a, a long road since she's been here. She um, came to us, you know, everything looked really dire. Then she um, responded to some treatments for a period of time and she got a little better. And now again, um, I'm no medical expert, but just talking to Dr. Prejean and them, you know, the stuff that was working is no longer working or being helpful for her long-term treatment plans. Um, she has been really excited to have this opportunity to maybe go home with her family. Um, even seeing her today from last week, um, her walking is a little bit worse, you know. So she is in a decline um, while she is young and she does seem I guess I'll be today. Um, she does have issues that are very severe. Um, I'm sure y'all have read and looked over everything, but even prior to her getting here, she was participating in um, classes on the local level. She was completing what she needed to complete it. And she also finished while going through treatment, some Ashland University stuff. I know we're not talking about all of that, but she was trying to do what she could do while she was here, um, you know, and with a good institutional record. So we just kind of wanted to mention some of those things. She does have mental health issues, but currently um, with, you know, her treatment, her everything has stabilized on that end. And if you have any questions for any of our other staff members, we do have, you know, mental health in here and Dr. Prejean, if y'all needed to know anything specific, but we just wanted to mention those things. Um, and our family has talked to different staff here, even the mental health department. So they are working towards getting her whatever care that she may need. Well, thank you, uh, Warden LeBlanc. That's been very helpful. I don't see where anybody has any other questions. So if Ms. Cheatman would like to say, make a statement, I think we're prepared to vote. Anything you'd like to tell us? Um. When I was sentenced, I wasn't given a death sentence and to be served in the penitentiary. And um, my illness is a death sentence. And um, sorry, I know that I'm not entitled to the opportunity to spend my last days with my family, but it would be, I guess, an honor if I would be granted that, that ability to, to be able to spend the last little bit of time that I have left with my family, because I, I know that I don't have a lot of time left. And I know that I'm completely at you at your mercy, pretty much. Um, and I just ask that you just take into consideration um, 
just everything that was said in this hearing. That's all. Yes, yes, ma'am. We'll do. Um, I think we're prepared to vote. Your case was assigned to me, so I'll be voting first. Uh, my vote, based on the information that's been provided to us in the record and today, uh, my vote today would be to grant the medical parole um, to the brother's house, to the plane in Colorado Springs, uh, with a, a, only a, the added condition that you be contacted at least monthly and that any unusual circumstances uh, regarding your condition be reported to Louisiana immediately. I wish you well. Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Mar Mr. Marabella. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, my vote for the same reasons will be the same as yours. And uh, likewise, uh, Ms. Cheekman, good luck to you. Thank you so much. Ms. Wise. Uh, I concur with my colleagues. My vote is the same for the same reasons. I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Dorch, for participating today. We appreciate your assistance in her Thank regard. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jacqueline Cheatman passed away six months after she was released on parole. Condolences to the family. And justice for justice, Cheatman. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below.